All right, so this says solve this equation. This is a radical equation. We have variables underneath the root sign. So we also have uh, two radicals, right, that both have x's under. So this is a bit of a uh, higher level one. I'll show you how to work this one out. So we want to solve this equation uh, knowing that x is greater than 0. Okay, so it tells us x is greater than 0, so we know um, our restrictions. Uh, x is greater than 0, which will make make sure that the values underneath here will uh, both be positive, okay? So what we want to do is we want to, if we have two radicals, you want to isolate for one on one side for sure, okay? Now you don't have to do it this way, but it just makes the math just a little bit easier if you can isolate one radical by itself on one side first. That's what I always do. So let's get root 3x maybe by itself. What that's going to do is I'm going to have to subtract 7 from both sides. So that would be 5, you know, minus the 7 is going to be minus 2. So when you have one radical isolated on one side, now you square both sides to get rid of the root sign. So now you square both sides, but what you notice on this side is this is a binomial. So please, 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 please. Every year students do this, please don't do it. Okay, you guys be the first class to have no one do this, okay? This is what it's gonna look like. Do not simply square this number and then square this number and be done. That's not what that means. We have to foil it out, right? We have to expand it out properly. So, this is on this side, the left side, this is going to be just a regular old 3x because the square root and the square cancel each other out. This one is going to be, you can rewrite this if you want, you don't have to, but just to be clear here, we're squaring this whole side, so we have to do a expanded multiplication. So root, root 5x plus 4 times root 5x plus 4 is just a regular old 5x plus 4. Those roots are gone. Then we have a minus 2 root 5x plus 4, and then another minus 2 root 5x plus 4. So I have minus 4 root 5x's, 5x plus 4 is there. So again, I did outside, minus 2, root 5x plus 4, and then minus another 2. So that's uh, those two terms you can combine. But notice that we're not going to get rid of our radical here. Okay, we're not going to get rid of the radical. And that's not a real problem. All that means is that we need to just do this process again. We just need to repeat the process by isolating for the radical and then square both sides. And do that again to get rid of the second radical. All right, so have I done everything correct here so far? Um, let's now get this isolated all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides, which is going to make this a negative 2x, I guess. I have a plus 4, another plus 4, so that's positive 8, so I'm going to do minus 8 over here. Okay, so those 4s are taken care of. They're combined and subtracted. And then I have, so what I have left, I have this negative 4 root. Okay, so let's divide everything by negative 4 now. And that's going to leave me this, root 5x plus 4. And yes, you can simplify some things here if you want. That would be a, probably a good idea. And now this, yeah, this side I would like to probably simplify because you've got a lot of negatives there. You've got common factor. So I could pull a 2 out. I'll just do this quick over here. I'll put a negative 2 out here, and that's going to be x plus 4. And I, I can pull a negative 2 out of the bottom, right? So those can go. So I've got x plus 4 over 2. Does that look good? Divide everything by 2. Divide everything by negative 2. All right. So that's the simplified version of this over here. And I will now square this. So let's square this. And I'll, of course, square 5x plus 4. So I have a binomial that I'm squaring. So that's going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 8x plus 16 all over 4 equals 5x plus 4, because the square and the square root cancel out. 
so yeah, this is a bit of a longer one, right? This is definitely a bit of a longer one. This is the longest type that you'll that you'll face out, I think. Okay, so we're getting close. Um, now we have no more radicals, so now what we gotta do is just solve this somehow. Uh, I see there's a quadratic, right? There's a squared there. So let's multiply everything by four, gather like terms, see what we get. And I'm just gonna make myself some space here, it looks like. So I get x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 20x plus 16, which x squared, let's subtract 20x, that's negative 12x. Let's subtract 16. Oh, look at that, 16 on both sides. So that's just gone. So that is equals 0. This is x and x minus 12 equals 0. This is the zero product principle, by the way. Um, there were a few of you on the last test, I'm marking those last tests there, that when I asked you to solve using the zero product principle by factoring and using the zero product principle, some of you left it totally blank. So I'm not sure if, if you're not understanding what the zero product principle is. But factoring an expression, and if you have just factors that multiply to zero, the zero product principle says that the solutions for x here come when one or both of these factors are equal to zero. So you let each of them equal zero and solve for the variable. So it looks like both our, our numbers here would be, looks like zero and 12. So w what we have to do now is we have to say, okay, does this work out? Let's see, uh, zero and 12 are our two proposed answers. Uh, they fit with the restrictions, but we should definitely check to see if this is, uh, if this is indeed true. So down here I have a little check uh, looks like I've done 12, so x equals 12 here. So 3 times 12 is 36, 5 times 12 is 60, and so on. So I did a little check over here. x equals 12 seems to work out. What about x equals 0? I'll do that one for us. So 7 plus root 3 times 0 equals root 5 times 0 plus 4 plus 5. So that's 7 plus this is 0. This is root four, that's two. So that seems to work as well. So there's your two answers. You can circle those and be confident that those would be your two solutions to that radical equation. Question? Questions from anyone? No, you good? Okay. So if you have two radicals in an equation, so here's your original equation, then isolate for one, uh, square both sides. You're probably get, not going to get rid of the other uh, radical, so you have to isolate for that second one, do the same thing, square both sides. Then solve it however you can, and it's probably going to be a quadratic because we've done a lot of squaring, right? So you're probably going to end up with a quadratic. It's a perfect example. If you know how to do this, you're pretty much set for this section.